our speaker today, uh, briefly, will be uh, someone who's going to tell us about Puerto Rico. Her name is Millie Lugo Ferdinand, Ferdinand and was born and raised in Puerto Rico. She has a very impressive uh, history here, uh, and uh, I'm here to welcome her to come up and uh, tell us about what's going on there. Thank you. Good morning, or should I say buenos dias? Uh, my name, by the way, is not Millie. That's what everybody calls me, but my name is Maria Milagros Lugo. And the Ferdinand came afterwards, it's my husband's. Uh, so Maria Milagros Lugo is who I am. And I am born and raised in Puerto Rico. I came to the state of Florida in 1983. So this is home, but that's where I come from. That's where my heart is. A, I grew up, Puerto Rico is like a rectangle. We take this paper and Cookie Monster came and took a chunk out of this corner here. And that's, that's the shape of Puerto Rico. If we take the island and we fold it like this and then like this again in this little corner here, that's where my grandma's house is. Okay. <laughs> A Puerto Rico again is a rectangle and from east to west is divided by the most beautiful mountain ridge you can ever imagine. So when I go to Puerto Rico, I go to the mountains because I need to get my eyes full of green. Florida, there's no green here. Unless it's been raining a lot, there's really no green here. So I go to, to get my eyes full of mountain and my eyes full of green. That's that's what makes my heart full and, and complete. Uh, to talk about Puerto Rico, I have to go back a little bit. We were a tiny little spot in the world in between the north to us is the Atlantic Ocean, <coughs> excuse me, and the south is the Caribbean Sea. And we were inhabited by the Taino Indians, uh, much like me with a darker skin, very dark hair. I'm very Taino, by the way, in my looks. A, and in the 1492, 1493, the, here comes the Spain, the conquistadores. Okay, that my husband is one of those, by the way. And here they come and they conquer the island and th make the Tainos their, <coughs> basically their slaves, even though they brought uh, African Americans with them, uh, because those were the ones in their ships, in La Nina, La Pinta, and La Santa Maria, and I'm sure you've heard that before. Uh, so they take the Indians and they make them their, their workers. Okay, and we live happily ever after until the Spanish-American War. And in 1898, so we're talking several centuries there, uh, the United States won the Spanish-American War and in payment, if we can call it that way, the Spanish government signed the papers. We were like a car you know, and you sign the title and you pass the title to somebody else, that's exactly what they did. So now all of a sudden we don't belong to Spain, we belong to the United States. And they say it's not a colony, but yes, we are. Uh, they say it's a territory, but that's okay. So we are this little island in the middle of the ocean with lots and lots of water between the United States and, and it's big water and it's blue water because Puerto Rico is the tip of a volcanic area. So right off, particularly the north coast, it goes very deep, extremely deep. So when you are on the coast, on the north coast of Puerto Rico, you can see the bluest blue ocean you can ever imagine. And the contrast, if you look back, is the green, and if you look to the ocean, is the blue. It's absolutely breathtaking. And that's, that's where I come from. I moved to the United States uh, again in 1983. At the time, there was <coughs> a, we were going through a recession. There was official 24.5% unemployment. Can you imagine 24.5%? That's 
huge. And like any other area, when the unemployment is high, if you don't have food in your house uh, to feed your kids, you're going to steal it. But your kids are going to eat no matter how. Okay, so uh, uh, crime went like drastically up, very drastically up. And then the goons in South America uh, take advantage of the need on the island and they start, it's, a, it's very easy to get to Puerto Rico because we are between North and South America. So they start introducing drugs. So we were the first stepping stone okay, from, to the drug market from uh, South America to Puerto Rico to the United States. Once you are in Puerto Rico, you're an American citizen. Uh, you don't have to present anything and uh, to come to the mainland. Okay, so uh, again, when I moved, it was 24% uh, and the crime was going, he, I mean, huge. And I said, enough is enough. My car was vandalized just because. Okay, and, and I said, enough is enough. I, I really don't need to take this. And I, I moved to the United States and I've been here since. Uh, if we go back again in my little story, uh, we were part of the United States and in 1917, exactly 100 years ago, uh, the United States was going to go into the First World War and they needed men and we had the men. Up till that moment, we were not American citizens, we were a colony, okay? But at this point in time, the United States needed soldiers. So they offered, and they offered, and I know that you have heard this, the Jones Act, okay? The Jones Act at that time meant that we were American citizens, hoo hoo! Okay, that's number one. Number two, the Jones Act said that the, the island of Puerto Rico could not do business with any other ships. Remember, we're an island surrounded by water, so everything that goes in Puerto Rico goes by ship, either ship or flown. Uh, we could not do business with any other ship that did not come from the United States. Okay, we had to buy from the United States. Uh, Mind you not, let's say that we are buying pottery and that pottery is made in Mexico and then it cannot come from Mexico directly to Puerto Rico. It has to go from Mexico to whatever in the United States where it pays taxes to go in and then it pays transportation to come to Puerto Rico and again it pays taxes when we buy it. So I, I'm giving you a, a tax a trail there, a, everything we bought, everything we bought was easily double the price than you would pay here in the United States. Cars, particularly cars that had a huge, huge tax a, as they were shipped into the island. But you know what? We're very happy people. That's, that's our nature. We, we're bubbly and happy and we make jokes of everything because through the years we have seen it so hard and so hard that we have to make a joke out of it. We have to laugh. We have to dance. We play our music. We play our drums. And the taxes went up so we didn't have money to go into a, a, an establishment so we gathered out in the street and we played our music on the street and we danced on the street and and that's who we are. Uh, <clears throat> so Puerto Rico goes on, and, and how Puerto Rico uh, came to the debt of so many billions of dollars, I have no clue. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that everything has to be imported, okay? Uh, so here comes Maria, M my namesake. Okay, here comes Maria. Irma went through, but Irma went north. Okay, uh, Irma basically did not touch Puerto Rico. They, if somebody goes like that, they lose power. Because yes, the grid is very old and it's very, very b rusty and needs repair. 
Uh, so for Irma, they had uh, lost power already, and then a week later, here comes Maria. And Maria absolutely devastated Puerto Rico. Again, I told you this is the island. Maria went through this bite and went out this way. Okay, so it went diagonal through the island, and Maria was a huge storm, huge in terms of, of the whole circle, uh, and Puerto Rico was completely under the winds of Maria. In Puerto Rico, you don't evacuate anywhere. There's no place to go. Okay, you, you close your windows, you protect your property the best you can, and you stay there. Uh, you have water because you know you're going to lose power. That's, I mean, that's for granted. So you have your candles and your flashlights and your batteries and you have water and you have food and can and a can opener. Da, 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 da. You have everything because that's, that's how we grew up. We don't go anywhere. And we had, a, we had everything, let's say, for two weeks. Mind you not, I, if it were not, and um, this is a little commercial here maybe, uh, I am in Facebook and I have daily contact with my friends. I still remain very close to all those that went to school with me when we were in primary grades, okay, which is a wonderful experience to talk to your friends <laughs> for that like, length of time. Anyway, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, uh, Maria goes by and of course they lost contact with everybody. There's no cell towers, there's a, no electricity, they can charge their, their cell phones, there's, here comes the little generators in the, the houses. And the first I hear is from one of my friends who lives basically in the center of Puerto Rico. She didn't lose power initially, and she, she didn't lose cell contact. And she could text. And she's the first one who told me I'm okay. And throughout those first two weeks, hearing from a friend that told you I'm okay didn't mean they're okay. It meant they're alive. That was it. Okay. And, and I, I cannot explain the sensation of I'm sitting in my house and all I can do is go in my computer and try to see if somebody else said I'm okay is exasperating. Anyway, uh, all my friends are okay, but it's been how many days since Maria? Almost two months, not quite. A uh, whitefish happened and whitefish was uh, cut off. Uh, Puerto Rico's government is just as tricky as the United States government. Uh, people steal, people say lies, uh, everywhere. Okay, the corruption is everywhere, regretfully so. And because we are so small, we are only 100 miles in the big side by, by 35 miles. So we are very, very small. Everything, every act of corruption has a huge effect on the people. Okay, so, <clears throat> Here's, again, th the need is outstanding. All I could see in my computer were people taking their cell phones and, and recording this, this family that their house, the front of the house is a flush on the street, but the back of the house is a precipice. So the house is up on still. So they're, they're filming with their phone because the water is gushing down the mountain and they know the back of the house is going to go. Okay, so they are as close as they dare be, taping until the house goes. So here they are. They have maybe one room in front of the house left where they can be there for the rest of the storm and the aftermath. So the United States is tremendously generous, tremendously generous, and they have given an enormous amount of money, an enormous amount of supplies. And these supplies were shipped to Puerto Rico and they were sitting. Truckloads and truckloads, bless you, of supplies were just sitting because FEMA was there 
but FEMA did not have the orders. Okay, so they were there twiddling their thumbs. Uh, the governor of Puerto Rico put a huge generator in one of our big fancy hotels of FEMA. The employees had electricity. They had a buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we are very, very famous for rum. So they had everything they wanted except work because they had not received the orders. Uh, among people who have standed out, in all of this is the mayor, Lady Mayor of San Juan. Her name is Carmen Julie Cruz. Julie put up her rubber boats, boots all the way up here, and she got on the flood waters. Uh, most probably the flood waters had black waters mixed into them, but she didn't care. She went in and she took people out of their houses and she took people into the shelters and. And the governor of Puerto Rico, a very young, very good-looking guy, twiddling his thumbs with FEMA. Okay. <clears throat> Eventually, we have, what, two weeks? The Mr. Trump went to Puerto Rico and tossed paper towels. Yes. yes. Uh, and said that we were putting a dent into the budget. What budget? Anyway. That's where we stand, and that's where we stand today as of last night. By the way, uh, water has to be pumped because it's, there's mountains, 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 okay? So water has to be pumped, and if there's uh, no electricity, there's no water. Okay, so people were putting pipes, PVC pipes together, together. But we have springs all over the place, all over the place. Puerto Rico is beautiful. It was. Uh, and they were putting pipes all the way to the road so anybody could come and take water out of the springs. They made a makeshift shower. They don't have water at home. So they made a makeshift uh, shower. It's closed in three sides and it even has a shower curtain. So people can have privacy. They can go in there and they can take their clothes off and take a shower. And on the other side of the shower, uh, they made a, an area to wash your laundry. This is all off of the road, on the side of the road. There is this community but very close to my grandma's house. I told you my grandma's house is in the middle of the island. The only way of getting to their community, and it's about, I don't know, about 100 families, they had nice, beautiful, big bridge. The bridge was just swallowed by the river waters, uh, so they're completely incommunicated. Okay, they, need is the mother of invention, I don't know if you know this, they devised a system of pulleys from one end to the road where the bridge used to start, and they tied a grocery cart. To, they took all the, the heavy part, they just left the plastic basket, and they tie the plastic basket and they pull. And the pulley goes to the other end. And rescue people are at the other end filling the baskets with bottles of water and food. And, and they pull again and here comes the basket and they empty it. And they send the basket again. I mean, how many times are they going to send the basket and receive goods? But that's how they, up till now, that's how they live. Up till today. That's how they live. I could go on and on because, again, I have lived glued to my computer trying to, to see what's going on. Uh, my friends are losing their patience, very, very much losing their patience, and the finger pointing, and they should do this and they should do that. I, I think that from the United States we have a better idea of what's going on because we see the whole thing. They don't. They're, they're, they don't have power still. Uh, as of yesterday, like 80 people had water, running water, 80%, I should say. It had running water, but running water doesn't mean that it's drinkable because there's vermin that are also taking baths in the water. Okay, uh, But they have running water. They can do laundry at home. They can flush their toilets. They can take a shower. <coughs> uh, how much was it? I think it was like 25% had power. 
Okay, 25% of three and a half million people have power. Uh, so the conditions are, are very, I mean, if, if the biggest wish is to take a hot shower and dry their hair with a hair dryer. That is, oh my God, that's exactly what I would need to today. So from here, from this side of the big lake, uh, we see things very differently than they do. So what does Puerto Rico need? I need you to call your senators. I need you to call your representatives, and in our case, it's Vern Buchanan. Uh, we need to apply an awful lot of pressure. I, I, I am a squeaky wheel, by the way. Uh, we need the Jones Act lifted forever. Forever. It's not Trump lifted it for 10 days. <laughs> what good is 10 days? We want the Jones Act gone, absolutely gone. We were offered help, believe it or not, by Dominican Republic, who also were hit really hard, but they offered help. We cannot ac accept that help. We were offered help by the Cuban government. We cannot accept that either. God forbid, Cuba, no? Uh, <clears throat> and we were offered help by South America, but we cannot. They have to go through the United States and then come back down. Okay, so we need the Jones Act gone. And we need that debt of I don't know how many billions of dollars. We need that debt, you know, put it on hold, like completely on hold. There's absolutely no way that Puerto Rico can supply what the residents need and pay the debt. No way, okay? Puerto Rico has not hit rock bottom because right now people still have money. Everything you buy in Puerto Rico is cash because there's no internet for them to run your credit cards. Okay, so you need cash. You have to go to the bank, you have to get cash, and you have to go buy whatever. I, I've been to Russia, and Puerto Rico right now reminds me of Russia. People are making lines and lines and lines, and you don't know what's inside, but you're making a line just in case there's something left when you get there. That's exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, <clears throat> so we need, we, we need that debt, if possible, to be erased. Okay, that's something you can suggest. And, and we need the Jones Act lifted. And we need FEMA to do their job. FEMA is still not doing their job completely. Uh, we have trailers and trailers and trailers and trailers of goods that have not been distributed. And if that were to be distributed, I think that we would not be so hungry and so thirsty. Okay. So your, your, I understand that your money contribution goes directly to a church, and that church must have a reciprocal church, am I right? That's wonderful, because it doesn't go through the government. Okay, and, and this is an awful thing to say, but it's the truth. Okay, I have a cousin who started also a fundraising a entity, and she has I, almost half a million, half a million dollars, and she goes to nursing homes. She, that's what she chose to do. She sends the products to a, another person within their entity, and they go to nursing homes bringing diapers and food and da, 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 everything, everything that they need. So if we each take a, a sector of the, of the, take a little chunk out of the need, we will make a big difference. So on behalf of my people who are in my heart and that I absolutely adore my piece of land, that little thing there, I thank you for everything you can do. <laughs>